Hello and welcome to Quilt Ladders Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today's video is not your traditional tutorial. What I did was I got together a couple of very hardworking women who are leading up mass making groups in our area. And together, by organizing their volunteers, they're going to be making about 7,000 masks from one group and 4,000 masks from another. So that's 11,000 masks total in one community that's going to be going to healthcare workers just in one week. So we sat down to chat and we talked about how they got started and how they manage their volunteers and fabric donations. So that way, if you're at home watching and you're making masks in your living room, if you're willing to be the face of something like this, you can create a movement within your own community and make a big, big impact like these women are doing. We have Shelly and Erica Ng. They are fashion designers by day, and right now their business is on hold because of COVID-19. And so they put out a call that they were gonna start making masks, and now they have hundreds of men and women helping them out from all over the community and they are making thousands of masks a week. They expect to make about 7,000 this week. We also have Stacy Kinty. She doesn't sew at all, but she is good at organizing. And so she has gotten a lot of folks together and they are doing assembly line sewing in their own living rooms with no contact to be able to make 4,000 of actually a rather complicated pattern for one of our local hospital systems. And they should be making about 4,000 in one week, maybe less than. So we're gonna chat with them and we did a Zoom chat. I know everyone is joking about Zoom and SNL did a really funny parody of it but uh, we did a zoom chat so we just kind of let it run so if you're thinking about maybe trying to organize people in your community to make a bigger impact than you can in your own living room I encourage you to watch this it's kind of long because we talk about how they got started how they manage it how they manage requests how they um, have to say no sometimes to some people and how they uh, organize their volunteers because it's two very different ways for each of them and you know you might just want to figure out what your style is and what's going to work well for you and if you are hooked up in one of these groups already in your community maybe you can learn a tip or two and make yours run more smoothly so that way you can make a bigger impact in your own community so keep making masks and maybe pop this video on while you're sewing next and see if you want to start a movement like this within your community Let's watch the interview. Well, my name is Shelly Ng, and we're out in rural Illinois, Erie, Illinois. This is my daughter, Erica, and our day job is a fashion design house. Erica is a fashion designer. She has a label, Emi D, and uh, on the weekends, we dabble in baking. I'm a pastry chef, and so uh, when all of this came about, both of our businesses got shut down. We can't, uh, we're not essential workforce and our studios are both shut down. We can't sell anything or work with clients. And, and that was sort of the beginning of us thinking about what we could do to contribute to uh, a need that was out there. And you started almost right away making math. Yeah. And it was, was at first just the two of you and then people were reaching out or how did that come to be? You yeah, we, we actually were watching Rachel Maddow. We're kind of news junkies. We come from, we come from a news background. <laughs> and uh, Stephanie, you know this. We, we, we were do. We, we are former employees of the Quad City Times. <laughs> That's right. So we're, we're kind of uh, news junkies. And um, we were watching what was going on in the country. And it, it was just an amazing revelation to the two of us. And of course we sew, so it couldn't understand how this was a possibility. Um, they showed a video of how to make the face mask, the Deaconess face mask. And of course, both of our businesses are closed right now due to the, to the virus. And I just said to Erica, let's rewind that, watch that tape again, because we can make masks. That's what we can do right now. And we started making masks. It was kind of that easy. Yeah. That's as complicated as the start, starting point was. And we put out a Facebook post on March 19th, one post that said, it, evidently, in order to get our medical professionals covered with uh, face masks, we're going to have to do it ourselves. And in a couple of days, we had 400 people show up at the Freight House Market where uh, Stacy's at right now, because that's our drop-off pickup point. 
And uh, in two days, we had 400 masks show up and it's just grown from there. Um, Stacy, when did, when did you get started in this? Right about the same time on the, um, I believe it was the 21st of March, my um, supervisor at the hospital reached out to me and asked if it were, would be possible for me to gather as many supplies at, such as masks or, and gloves and anything that I could get from any of the schools in our district and possibly donate them to Unity Point Health Trinity. And once he did that and just hearing the desperation and urgency in his voice and talking about the supply chain being broken basically and knowing that what they had was what they were going to have, I felt that there had to be something we could do. And I noticed on Facebook that there were people saying, hey, I'm making masks, if you have any fabric, blah, blah, blah. And my mother immediately said, I'll make you masks. And I really, it just happened so suddenly, like you said, I, I thought, well, I know a lot of people. And I reached out to the costumers who I work with through my theater. And co a couple of them were already sewing for Genesis, sewing bonnets. That was the first thing that had happened through our church. And so I thought I probably could have an impact just by knowing people because I'm good at that, at connecting and networking with people. I do not sew. That is not my talent, but my gift is reaching out and getting people to gather and work for a cause. And so that is what I decided to do. And I started a Facebook group and then everything kind of came together because I found out about what Shelly and Erica, Lori and Summer were doing through the freight house and we connected and I think the rest kind of is history, the way everything has worked so cooperatively between us. And for anybody who's watching at home, our main purpose here is to show you guys how to organize a group like this. Because I think a lot of people are working individually and maybe in a small group, but you ladies are working with hundreds of volunteers. Literally, yes. we have. Yes. And between the two guys, groups, I'd say we have well over 500. Yes. So um, Stacy's group is making what's called an Olson mask, which is a specific type that one of the hospitals here in our region has requested. And Shelly and Erica are making the Deaconess, which is a surgical style mask. So how did you guys get to a point and, and how do you manage the day to day of having so many volunteers to manage all the different points? Because I know that you guys have kind of split up jobs to make it kind of assembly line in your own home. Stacey, why don't you go ahead and uh, explain how you okay. guys are organized, because you're very different than what we're doing. Um, our system started off with, if you have fabric, start sewing, follow the Unity Point Health, um, Trinity, Olson Mass style, and if you can sew, sew. If you can't, find a way to cut. Um, we were routing materials through tubs at the Scott County Library in Eldridge, Iowa. Um, that was our first, um, our first point of access. And our, we have, I have several friends who work at the Scott County Library. And one in particular, Connie, was very, very helpful in helping facilitate that. So we would have a pick up and a drop off point with messages through me. Um, then as things started rolling and we got bigger and we also had an incident where masks that were to be picked up by a group were stolen in the middle of the night so we kind of moved away from that and on the down low our secret drop box is actually using the drop it. box this is the one on youtube for everybody <laughs> it's okay it's okay because <laughs> we only use we use the scott county library drop box to put finished masks in in a secure fashion and then connie gets them out and gives them to me we oh, also we also move we've also moved to my front porch being a point of drop off but i can't leave out how incredible Becky Esbaum has been in facilitating our assembly line program where um, she she's very good at task analyzing any situation and saying okay if we have people who do this this is how much time it takes to do x number of mass um, surging and if we have people 
sewing, this is how long it takes to then sew those masks that have been surged versus the tedious work of cutting and so and surging and sewing or cutting and folding and sewing. So basically and, one person is assigned one task and then it goes to the next person who has the next task. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have probably 60 people in that loop for mm -hmm. our assembly line and we have um, utilized high school theater thespians who are driving um, from point a to point B or sometimes A, B, C, D, E, F, G on a um, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And um, they transport the materials from place to place. They're given a route list and um, the sergers work off of a Google document. They tell, the sergers say when their step is ready. They know they kind of have to have a goal of having something ready to go by the next route day and then they go on to the sewers and then they go straight to Unity Point. That's great. And what's your process, Shelley and Erica? Well, can I, can I ask Stacy a question? Because I think it's important. In the very beginning of this, th there's some very distinct differences between Stacy's group and our group. And Stacy, uh, Trinity, in the very beginning, you worked with Trinity to actually identify a very specific pattern that right. you want to use because that's always an issue that comes up is there are a hundred different versions of everything that can be made online but you worked very specifically with trinity and you your sewers mm -hmm. know exactly what to make yes. each, right yes you're right shelly um trinity actually was not as quick to say this is the pattern we want they looked at i kind of look at it as they looked at the long game and thought, well, if we run out of N95s, we have X number, that's a, a, a finite number of N95s. If and when we run out, and depending how long this goes, we need to have a mass that we can put a filter into. So the Olson mass is designed to either go over an N95 or have filter paper inserted to the inside of it. And so, Unity Point Health Trinity as an organization across Iowa, Illinois, um, lower Wisconsin and Minnesota, they decided that they wanted that very specific Olson. And they are, they do not add, we do not add elastic to it or ties. They add the elastics and the ties, if they're, they're, whatever they choose. They're fitting they're, them they're, for each individual. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's they're using that's their volunteer corps for that. Sure, and that that's a really big distinction between the two groups. And so, Stacy's group is very directed, and they have goals. They sort of have an as, this assembly line with um, with uh, quotas that really need to be met because they're really meeting a broad spectrum need by Trinity and all of their subsidiary facilities. Mm -hmm. Our group is focused on the deaconess. And our approach in the very beginning was to be very specific that we were only gonna do the deaconess. We weren't gonna do the Olson. We weren't gonna do a variation of the deaconess, right? Sure. We, we basically said, we, there was a video, there's a fabulous video online that can be Googled and it shows a couple people demonstrating how to make that mask. We didn't want the filter. We did not want people making decisions on filters or pockets or different kinds of ways to make this mask. We wanted to have a mask that was going to reach basically everybody else. At the time, we didn't know it was going to be everybody else except Trinity, but that's how it actually beautifully fell into place that way. So um, we, we put out one Facebook post. This is, this is the evolution of what happened. We put out a Facebook post on the 19th of March, which I think is a Thursday, if I'm remembering correctly. And I just happened to be a pastry chef and I sell at the Freight House Farmer's Market, but that market's closed down because of everything going on and uh, some remodeling that they were doing. And the freight house stepped right up. When they saw that post, they immediately contacted me and said, we are between Illinois and Iowa. We're on the river. Everyone knows where this is at. 
we have a feeling this is going to turn into something big and you're going to need a distribution point. And for Stacy and I, it turned out that we really needed a centralized distribution <laughs> point mm -hmm. because after that initial post went out, I can honestly say, even while we're sitting here right now, my phone keeps binging at me around the clock. I'm getting requests from hospitals and doctor's offices, uh, nursing homes, uh, hospice units, uh, blood centers, ambulance crews, police departments, fire departments, all asking for masks. And in order to control this, I tell all of those requests, we are making this mask. This is the mask you're gonna get from us. I don't offer another option. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's too much to control when you have a volunteer core. So when I put that, that original post out, it said, this is what we're, gonna, what we're gonna make and here's the video. People contacted me. I did not call anybody. I didn't solicit a second time. It just, people, if you give them something that they can do, they will step forward. You don't have to find them. They're going to come, they're, gonna, they're going to drown you in requests to help you. The trick is managing that because you, you go from, I'm gonna make a mask and I've got a few yards of fabric at my studio for which we don't handle cotton ever. Yeah, no. Did, did we even have cotton no, when we, we started? <laughs> I make, I make wedding dresses, so I do with like silk and satin and lace and Swarovski crystals. We, I don't think we even had elastic in our studio. Finding elastic no. has, was, was an insane yeah. feat. But we put in that very first post, if you have fabric, drop it off on my front porch. If you have elastic, drop it off on my front porch and we're going to start making masks. Well, people wanted to make the masks with us. They started bringing their own fabrics they asked us you know how much do you need stephanie you stepped and, right up and, and shipped us a box of fabric and, and, some, and some people were just like you know i can't sew but i want to participate how can i participate and so we were so that's when we said you can help us cut because then we have to build the kits and assemble them and stuff and so i do that when you know there's a mountain of pre-cut fabrics that <laughs> over here that I will be turning into kits. Oh, and I mean, there's, there's like, yeah. and that's <laughs> one of many, your entire little oh, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so, so your, your kit system was just me. brilliant. So yeah. we have, we have people cutting, we have people, there's a, there's a late, we actually picked up from her today in LeClaire and she is like, she's 92 and- 94 and, years or old. Or 94, yeah. And, and all she wants to do is iron the fabric. And I'm like, great, we can use that too. So, and yeah, so it's, so it's system, everything. Your system is basically a couple of days a week. You guys are at the freight house. You do a contactless drop off of either kids to pick up um, or finished masks or materials. Right. And then you take in the request, you're like the centralized location for that, and then you dole out as the need is is met. Right. Yeah. What when it when it would when it first started, for anyone who wants to start this process, that very first week and and uh Stacy, you probably had this very same adjustment period because in the very beginning you just have this idea and a and we had 400 masks and we realized everyone's sewing skills were a little bit different. So we started making little funny videos, little, videos, little hints on how to do things a little bit differently. Because, because we were getting lots of questions, like repetitive questions. And so, in, and we would st we'd start with the basic, like sending them a, the demo of the video that we were actually using as our core pattern to them. And sometimes they would be like, but I just can't get the pleat thing. That seemed to be a really common one. So I did a little demo and had yeah. Shelly film it of how to do the pleats in the, in the Deaconess mask. We will not be requested by Hollywood to do any <laughs> movies. I can promise you that our our filming skills are very poor. But you know what? So, if you can clearly show how to do something and the video is clear, then that's all people need. Yeah. And I can go with it. Yeah. And and it's surprising. Sometimes the littlest hints actually 
made the process for so many of our sewers fast. Like uh, some people didn't realize that when you're putting these pleats in, even though in the little video, it doesn't say you should iron the pleats in, just telling someone, hey, we're gonna iron these pleats in, now you can sew a, this mask in, in half the time yeah. once you've pressed the fabric. And a lot of sewers who more hobby sew don't know that. So we figured out that there are little tricks that just because we sew and we know the tricks of getting things done, not everyone does that. So we, we initially figured out that we had to put some pictures and some little videos funny videos mostly <laughs> of how we get things done and also asking just continually you have to praise these people these people are putting their heart and yeah. soul I have we have I'm, men and women men and women and and I'm telling you I get called all night long I get requests from sewers who will just break down in the middle of the night and cry because they realize yeah. the impact that they're having I'm going to cry now because when they talk to you how they have felt lost in all this with nothing to, to do, they were just in their house, many of them alone, with nothing to do, now they, are, they have a purpose. They feel such pride in every single mask that they hand me. And there's a story that's being told right now through these masks, through all this crazy fabric, the different patterns, police wearing SpongeBob masks, what can be better than that? <laughs> I, I just feel like w not only are we helping the medical professionals and we are profoundly, this, the, the tears that I get when I go to a nursing home, uh, people are just astounded. We're, we're, my group last week made just under 7,000 masks. I mean, volunteer. I don't know the names of the people making the masks. Most of them are wearing a mask when they come over. I don't know what they look like. They just drive by, drop things off, or I pick them up off doorknobs. We have this May Day basket program where, the, like the elderly lady out in Leclerc. Yeah. She's 94 years old. I see her through her picture window. She leaves things on her doorknob. I leave her things on her doorknob, and I come back every other day. And that's how this works. And there's a, there's a story beyond the, the mask itself and the medical benefit for the folks that we're sewing for. We have given a pers purpose to people who were afraid and now they're busy. How do you guys manage the volunteer aspect of it? Because I think that that's probably the most daunting. A lot of the people who might watch this, we know how to sew, we, we've maybe been making them already ourselves, but to have that bigger impact aspect of it, how have you guys each done that to kind of get it into more of a fine-tuned system so that you have time to also make them yourself and distribute? Stacy, you probably have a more managed system, really a, a, a very <laughs> structured managed system than I do. So how do you manage your folks? I know um, a lot of the people who are sewing for us because a lot of the people who are sewing for us are in the um, North Scott area. We have people sewing, of course, in Bettendorf and Davenport, across the river. We have a woman in Taylor Ridge. We call her 800 plus Barb because <laughs> on her own, before she even started on her assembly line, she had done 800 masks. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so we have people all over the Quad Cities, but the core of our group is in um, North Scott. So I know a great many of them through my work as a Norscott teacher and theater director. So managing them is pretty easy because we do it through our Facebook page. Um, Shelly was talking about like the videos they did. For me, it was like daily updates. If I saw the same question come up two or three times in one day, the next day in my update, it was, remember, you know, no nose pieces, no top stitching, 100% um, cotton, um, and no attachments, you know, those kind of things. just putting those daily reminders in my daily updates to the to our team members and letting them know that there are certain requirements that we have to meet when we are sewing for Unity Point. Our other pieces, if they were producing some, because I did have some um, requests for Olson's outside of the Unity Point organization that needed um, ties or needed. Um, ear loops, uh, elastic loops, and they 
those were, I, you know, that I was a little freer with, but um, you're right, managing, making sure that we're meeting the specifications for the hospitals, that was, that's really important. And, you know, like we've had situations where even though we are, we try to be as specific as possible. And I'm a teacher, I'm a special education teacher, writing and um, do, create task analyzing a process and um, looking at looking at Unity Point's directions. And really, I took the PDF and I took out the additional information that they didn't need in there. And, you know, like they had in, this is what you need, but oh wait, don't do that part because we're gonna do that at the hospital. And that was confusing people. So I took yeah. it out. And I, task analyzing the process and rewriting the instructions really to the true basic level of need was one of the things that I did to help manage that, you know, the differentiation of the different sewers and their levels. Um, we all, and I think our assembly line process really helped with that. It really helped manage it so that if you have a serger and you are adept ad with working with it, then we're gonna let you search and we're gonna let you focus on really becoming good at that skill. And then if you are a sewer, then we're going to we're going to utilize you and not every single person in our group is in that assembly line i have um a group of six women who the only thing they are doing is making scrub caps for the university of iowa hospitals and clinics um and we have three different styles of scrub caps that we're doing um a tight fit um that is reversible a poofy one and then a really poofy one so um so we have different product that we're producing in that, mm -hmm. in that vein. Um, and like I said, we had already, Becky had already led the charge on the 1000 bonnets that they started, that started the whole thing for our area. Um, I think managing the differentiation of the learning styles was a challenge, but that's something again, that I feel like I brought to the table as a, as a teacher. So it wasn't very frustrating. It, you know, as long as I was able to handle individual questions and say, oh, by the way, um, I'll send you a PM and we can go over that again. But I'm not a video maker <laughs> at all. Oh, so, so, I love your guys' videos, but mine are really, <laughs> really cool. I, would, I would be a mess. <laughs> to show the impact that the assembly line has and that having organized mm -hmm. um, volunteer system, you know, yeah, I know right now you're trying to do 4,000 masks as quickly as possible. You've got 60 people working on the assembly line. How long do you think that's going to take you to get them all oh, done? Oh, um, they'll be done probably by Friday night. And they got the fabric yesterday morning. That's remarkable. I know. Yeah. So uh, they will be, because like we were getting all of our um, information back. All the surgers were finishing 250 of them in one day. And so they're turning those around so quickly. And if we manage tomorrow, the list and the route list is ready. If we manage to get them to the sewers tomorrow, I would maybe not completely by Friday night, but definitely by Sunday night, I'll be handing over 4,000 masks to Unity Point Health in a matter, and that's in less than seven days. That's remarkable. Yeah. Especially considering we're, we're working with volunteer sewers. This is not corporate America doing this. This right. Is, this is an assembly so line so where, you know, the package is being, you know, everything's being put in a box that's being moved to the person behind you. It's not that assembly line. This is being put in a box and being moved to somebody who's way away from you and you don't have direct communication with. Yes, no contact assembly line. And so right. how many do you think you guys have, have made since this all started about a month or so ago? Well, can I, can I show very profound differences in the process now now that they've heard how Stacy is doing this I think it's really important to see we are on the total opposite end of the spectrum in how we organize our volunteers mm -hmm. I want to say that we are the kindergarten teachers <laughs> and we are having fun with whatever we get <laughs> because <laughs> because we're so well, your mask is a little bit easier to produce the Olsen is very and, that, and that's the beauty of it. And I yeah. think that that's the most important part about what we're doing. I literally am not managing a single person. I do not manage anyone. 
Yeah. And going into this, we immediately said, we want volume, we want speed, and we were going to have a, a basic rule about what we were going to accept, and we repeat it constantly. We repeat, yeah. you know, no nose piece, no interfacing, no mm -hmm. filters, you don't have to leave slots, no, we prefer not to have ties. We continually, probably at once every day at some point, we repeat the rules on Facebook. Oh yeah. And we, we have several different places where we repeat the rules, but when we get our masks in, I have to admit, we do fix some masks yeah. because we have to. <laughs> But we use every mask that comes in. And we learned that you're going to get masks in that are not going to be accepted by the hospitals and they're not gonna be accepted by the nursing homes because no matter how many times you say cotton, they wanna bring you fleece. So that we have got a fair amount mm -hmm. of fleece and they're lovely t -shirt fabric, t-shirt fabric, lots of different fabrics. But what we have found is all you have to do is ask and there's a facility out there that will take them. So there is not a mask that comes through our facility that doesn't get used. The vast majority of them are perfect. They're not always perfectly sewn, but we don't care. These are not lifetime use masks. This is to get us through a crisis. Yeah. And the hospitals love them, regardless of the fabric, regardless of the color, regardless of exactly what the sizing is all the elastic is not uniform because we can't make it uniform we're lucky to get elastic so whatever we get that's stretchy we use and my my core group of sewers men and women they just do i don't have to prompt them beg them grovel to them they're excited because i I think if you keep reinforcing to your group what a fabulous job they're doing and how appreciated they're, they are, they want to they wanna just stay with it. So like I said, this last week, we did almost 7,000 masks. We'll probably do that amount. We'll probably hit 7,000 this week. Saturday's I think usually our biggest day. Yeah, Saturday's the, a huge day. Yeah. We're at the freight house on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. And some people, that might seem a lot, but if you don't collect the mass up that frequently, I think you're gonna lose the momentum of the project. You have to keep the mass coming in and the cut fabric coming in and the cut fabric going out with the last bin with mass kits and a bin for things that are coming in and it's six feet from you. How do you guys do this? Well, what we do at the freight house, we have a drive by people don't even get out of their cars. We set it up so that everything, all the kits are put together. They drive by, we can drop it in their back seat or their trunk. They can pop their trunk. They, they toss things at us or have it in the back seat. Uh, when hospitals come same day to pick up the masks that are done, they take them right out of, I take them out of my car and put them in their trunks. Uh, it, it just works. The, the actually, honestly, the distancing aspect of it keeps it going very quickly. There's not a lot of chit chat. Everyone's all yeah. gussied up in their masks and you know, yeah. we're trying to distance. So there's not a lot of chit chat. There's no wasted time. It's, it a, is it's all like fast. curbside and drive through and it happens really, really fast. I, we've got a while. We've kind of covered a lot of things. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you think is essential for someone who's doing this by themselves in their sewing room or their living room or wherever they're sewing to try to create a movement like you guys have done to connect everybody and be able to make a bigger impact while completely social distancing through the entire thing? Is there any bits of advice that we haven't talked about that you guys think are, is really important? Yeah, I, I would say, okay, so here's the biggest, like, aha, amazing thing that I think we both, all of us, have kind of taken away from it, is that literally this all started because we were watching the news, we saw a need, we both do what we do, so we both are sewers, and we put a post on Facebook, that and, it's, it. and that's it, and we were just, you know, we, we were saying, you know, we see a need, we need your help you know, can you help us? And we got so many contacts 
within 24 hours, not even 24 hours. It was like an hour. It was, it was amazing. I think anybody who's wondering how they can help if they have the, if they are willing to put that Facebook post out there and be the face of it, they will, they will have what we've started. Yeah. It's not any more difficult than that. You have to have, you have to be able to ask for help. You have to be able to ask for donations, ask for fabric, ask for elastic. People will step forward. But when they step forward, got to be ready for it. Because when they step forward, you will be amazed. Yeah. They're going to come out of the woodwork to help you. They just are. And in the mm -hmm. end, you have a lot of new Facebook friends that you, <laughs> and so it's like one big extended, you know, out there everybody is trying to do a good deed and we're all friends and new family members at the same time <laughs> how about you stacy any last bits of advice for someone wanting to make this happen in their own community i think if you are looking for a way to do this i think social media can be an amazing tool when it's used well and i think this is probably the greatest way that i've seen it used in a long long time i agree um, being able to communicate in a positive way about filling a need. I live by the concept of see a need and fill a need. And so utilizing the tools that we have available to us um, to build that kind of network. And, you know, this may sound really corny, but, you know, Facebook puts out this, all these ideas and ideals about what they want to be as a company and i think this movement across our country because we are one of so many many hundreds of um facebook groups who have organized to do this and i think this has taken that high in the sky um mission that facebook has wanted to be and it's elevated it to to fruition in a way that I don't think Facebook could have even um, agree, could have agree. predicted. Um, these are, like Erica said, these are people who send out love to each other and encouragement. And one person posts a question and then you've got 450, 500 people who are doing research for you. Yeah. I started off at first when there were just like Shelly said, you put up a post and you've got all these responses. I put up a group and I put it out and then, you know, that exponential sharing we had 50 people in an hour in, in the group. And so at first it was like somebody would ask a question and I would do the research. And then pretty soon it's just, I'm watching the questions come up and before I can even get into doing the research, you've got 500 people doing research for you. And it is a huge sharing of love. They encourage, they woohoo, they put up fun gifts and videos about each other. It, it, these are women who- And men. Just, and men, yeah, it is, it's women and men. These are people, humans, who want to do good work, want to encourage each other, and this has opened up a door. I think Shelly talked about that before. It's opened up a door for them to be able to reach beyond their machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and touch, you know, I, I started off, I, I kind of end every post I have with good humans doing good work for the good of humanity. And it really, really is in such a way that I never imagined that I could ever be a part of. And I'll tell you something else. From, for, from the two of us, it has made sewing cool again. <laughs> it is. It's so fun. <laughs> again. Yeah. yeah. It is and an I've learned. I have learned so much. Granted, we had a joke in our, one of our, snap, our, our text group chats the other night. Um, with my costumers who know that I don't sew. They just know that it is not me. I will cook and I will bake for them till the cows come home, but I will not sew. And so they were joking about how they were sewing tired. Um, that, and one of them sewed a front to a uh, back or, and messed up something. And, and I, I let them go on and chit chat about that. And my final line was, well, guys, I can say that I'm 100% positive. I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> they're like of course not you know and so it, but sometimes and not not stereotypically sometimes people who sew are quiet little crafters yeah. and they have their own little circles and these this some of the things that bring me the greatest joy are literally are watching these people encourage each other and 
meet each other and share comments and reach out to one another. I think that's phenomenal. We have elderly church women in sewing guilds giving advice to first-time sewers. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you a story about one of our sewers. I'm not going to say what her name is because if she sees this, I don't want her to be embarrassed. But she and her mom came to the market about two weeks ago, and she's a very young little girl. I'm going to say she's early teens, and she's obviously wearing a port. She has, she's fighting cancer. And she's just this little teeny tiny frail thing. Grab one of those. I kept one of these. I'm going to show you. Um, she had never sewn before in her entire life. She had her mom go buy her a sewing machine. She came uh, to the freight house and asked if she could get a kit. She had taught herself how to do some straight stitches. She'd watched the video. And this is the mask that she made. This is one of them. This is how perfect that is. She had never sewn before. I want you to see this. Every single mask she brings back to the freight house, she has colored a picture with an inspirational mask message in it. She's put it in every single one of these. I told her, you know, sweetie, this is the hard, this is the hard mask to make to put that filter in there. And she said, no, I want to make them feel good about what they do. And, and this, she does this every single time. So here's the little card she puts in every mask and she colors these pictures with messages. They're all different, every single one of them. And that's the story of what's happening here. That's it. That's the whole story. Well, that's remarkable. Thank you ladies for taking some time out of your evenings and from making and organizing mask makers. And thank you for all the work that you guys are doing. It is just fantastic. Thank you for what you did. Thank you, Thank Stephanie, you. so Thank much you. for your encouragement and your donations. Everything has been overwhelming. I would yeah. almost made it through without tearing up a little, but you guys got me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're happy to help. We're very happy to help. We're able to, so we want to help. And, and I know I can't make thousands of masks a week, but I can get you guys fabric so that you guys can keep doing it. So that's need, right now. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thanks, Stacy. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.